finally begins. It was a five hour ride to get here. I'm so glad I finally found a tour going so I can get a ride. But it's too late for me to join a tour because I already got all my equipment and planned everything. I overpacked so much. I need to eat all of this food because I packed too much food and it's bursting. <laughs> day one recap I find a shuttle so that I don't have to take a bus and a taxi all the way to the trail even with the shuttle it took five hours I left at 4 30 a.m. started hiking at 9 30 the weight of just carrying everything is so much but I made it all the way to the first camp I wanted to go to another camp afterwards and just like really run through this trek but dude my back and my shoulders were just absolutely killing me and on that shuttle, I actually found a group, which the whole reason I've been going so low is because I struggled to find a group, so I figured now's a good time to learn. I get to the first camp, I set my own tent up, I cook my own food, and then it starts hailing. Somehow there's water getting inside my tent. It turns out that I did the tarp entirely wrong. So now I'm negotiating with the people who are hosting this tour. They're gonna let me use a donkey, which I don't like to use animals normally, but dude, my back and my shoulders are killing me. So I'm still like 80% doing this on my own. I'm just getting a little bit of assistance now. <laughs> person in this beautiful valley right now just me and a bunch of cows and I'm trying to negotiate just bringing the donkey with me and I don't think they're having it the negative to following this group is that it's a lot less freedom I have to go to the same pace as them and they're very short days so basically now I have a donkey but I'm gonna see less and I'm gonna spend more days on the trek so I mean if it was up to me I would have just gotten a donkey from the start then I could go at my own pace and I won't be fucking up my back in the process. I'll probably just get a mule for Aconcagua. I'm the type to be against using animals, but now I understand it for hiking when you're doing very long treks. You have to sometimes prioritize your own health over virtue signaling. Sorry, vegans. Hey, look, it's my donkey. What do you know? They've caught up to me.
I've reached the top of the mountain pass. I'm the only solo trekker here right now. So many people corrected me on my bag along the way. I actually met a few other people who did this without a group and without donkeys. It's made me feel a little bit weak. I think if I just use my backpack correctly, then I'll have no problem. And for the record, about the donkey, they had an extra one laying around anyways because more people canceled on the tour that like had the extra donkey. So I don't feel that bad using it. They just, you know, a few kilograms on its back because of me. I feel a little bit bad. Proud to say that I only stopped on the way up for pictures. I stopped at the first lagoon and then I stopped at the three lagoon viewpoint. So I guess that I'm still in shape but I'm being a baby about all of that weight on my back. Which, for the record, my backpack is messed up and I did bring way too much stuff. And using the donkey only brought down the weight a little bit. There's actually plenty of people traveling with a tent right now that have a backpack that weigh as much as my backpack still does without my tent on it. dogs follow me on trails it really makes me feel loved they do it a lot I think they're expecting food but still I like it this weather sucks So I was supposed to just go to Trapezio Pass at 5,000 meters, but I thought about it. I might have rented a donkey, but I ain't no little bitch. So I decided to hike a few hundred meters up to the mountain next to it. And oh my God, you can see this whole mountain range here that otherwise you wouldn't be able to see. So sometimes just going on random excursions like this, the view is very rewarding. Oh, and look at that. Another trail, another mountain peak. I wonder what the view looks like. Also a beautiful view. Like all the way down there is where most people go. Most people don't bother to see the gorgeous view from these two extra paths. Because, I mean granted, above 5,000 meters, people usually get pretty winded. But god damn, this, is, this view is fucking worth it, man. It's just a few hundred meters more. One of the most Instagrammable spots on the trek, and the weather is awful. But it's okay because it's near the campsite, so I can trek another three to four hours tomorrow and try again. But yeah, San Antonio Pass, baby. I hiked to the top of San Antonio Pass yesterday, and the view was terrible. But you know, mama didn't raise a little bit, and it's a clear day today, so. I'm going to hike it again all the way to the top.
So it's a clear day this time. I'm at the top of the pass again at around 5,100 meters. If you look real closely over there, you can see Saula Grande Base Camp, which is very monumental for people who are fans of survival documentaries. It's where that guy, I think his name is Joe, he fell into a crevasse, crawled out of the crevasse, crawled on a broken leg for several days, and luckily his friends were still at the base camp. So that's a very monumental area right there. So now I'm going through the pass, which is the more dangerous route. The tour group that has the donkey was advised not to do it, and uh, they said it's too dangerous. But I met another solo trekker, pretty much just said that he's gonna do the same trek. So if I break my leg, he'll find me. And uh, it's probably not really dangerous. They just have liability and I'm not one of their clients. That's the great thing about going solo. It's more freedom. Sliding down the steep path. Here we go. I am so fucking glad that I took the more dangerous route because look at this fucking view. Tried to follow maps me and I am just jumping off cliffs now. But it looks like I can kind of swivel my way down over there and get off over there. So I'm gonna try to do that. See that? That's, uh, that's a path. I just need to find a way to hop through these cliffs and get there, but there's, uh, there's hope. Oh, and look at that cow shit. So people have actually brought cows in this path. I'm not lost anymore, thank God. Somehow I've ended up at another point where I'm not sure if it's just going to be a cliff drop or if I can actually walk down there. I don't know for sure, but I think that this is my way out. <laughs> Being optimistic again. Three hours later, climbing up and down cliffs until I finally found a way down that pass. I am now on the normal trail. Thank God. That was fun, but also really scary and sketchy at the same time. You know what's crazy? I saw so many dead animal bones on those cliffs that I struggled to get down from. A bunch of animals died getting stranded on those same cliffs because they didn't know how to get down. And the next stop is Wayapa where I'll find the bus because there's not that much to see if you continue the trek I've realized. But yeah, it's been a fun trek. I would say this is my second favorite trek I've ever been on next to the three passes. And it was great training for Aconcagua. It made me realize I'm not in exactly the same shape I was in last year. And how to be self-sufficient because I'm gonna have to at some point there. There's like three high camps where they don't allow mules and I wasn't gonna rent a mule but now I will. So anyways thanks for listening to my rants and watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed. It's a fun experience to say the least. Just one stepping stone forward and living off the land and learning how to be fully self-sufficient in the wild. Who knows maybe on my next trek I won't bring food I'll just bring like a spear that I made or a bow and arrow or maybe just a fishing pole. But nah down at its core I'm just another stupid fucking American who somehow hasn't gotten himself hurt yet and has survived doing these stupid ass trucks on my own. It's still a pinche gringo, a stupido motherfucker, puta madre, and that's me. So few people take this route, these cows are just staring at me like, who the fuck are you? Hope that they're friendly. Hope they're nice. So, you know, it's really good to see these cows in the wild rather than chained up like most of the ones you see on the track. Even more wild cows and bulls. So many games. This one. Ah. Okay. Oh, they're beautiful though. I hope they're they're all kind. So many. This is gorgeous. Mountains, cows, so many cows. Shit. There's even more there. It's like dude. American doing up in our turn. This is a no people zone. It's a fucking cow zone.
Thank you.